What's up, sons? It's Blind God with Son of a Tech once again. And while we had the early review on the new AMD Ryzen 5 2400G, unfortunately today we're going to have the late review for the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. The Ryzen 3 2200G is the little brother to the Ryzen 5 2400G. This essentially means that you're getting a processor without SMT unlocked and you are also getting two less compute units on the actual GPU portion, the Vega GPU portion for this particular processor. So performance is going to vary or be a little bit lower, but that's provided you have the exact same memory speeds on both systems. I wanted to point this out because in fact, if you run 2133 or even 2400 speed memory on a 2400 G and you run 3200 megahertz on a 2200 G the 2200 G is going to outperform the 2400 G so before you spring for the extra dollars on the 2400 G consider the fact that you might want to actually spend that extra money on better memory or faster speed memory that being said in the box is going to be pretty much identical to the 2400 g you're going to have the processor itself a nice little amd sticker and the stealth cooler now the stealth cooler that came with the 2200 g actually had a little bit less uh, thermal paste on it and the fact that it was in the form of a circle kind of reminiscent of what you see on the spire where it has the copper core interestingly enough on the 2400 g that i got it took up a whole square i don't know why that really matters other than it was kind of an interesting fact or note now for these tests we went ahead and threw that out the door and used a hyper 212 primarily because i already had the back plate for the hyper 212 installed and it's not quite a friendly back plate to reinstall later so that's going to skew at least the temperatures on this as well as some of the performance when you start running the cpu and gpu together in any sort of heavy loads the ram we used was the reviewer kit ram that i had to order on my own it was about 260 dollars so not very cost effective but i wanted to make sure we were getting the experience that AMD intended. This memory in particular is the G-Skill Flare X 3200 megahertz, and for all these tests we ran at that speed. We powered everything with a Thermaltake TR2 430 watt power supply and the operating system was running on a Toshiba RD400. The rest of the specs will be in the description below including these and you can go ahead and click the Amazon affiliate link to support me of course. While running Ida64 we had temps of 71C and that was using basically the GPU, the CPU with FPU enabled for 5 minutes and this was on the Hyper 212 cooler. So our temperatures did improve quite a bit over the testing we got with the 2400G, and we weren't quite hitting that 85C barrier. However, that's probably going to be because this is a lower power part. Moving on, let's talk about mining a little bit. We didn't see anything different here than we saw with the 2400G. Performance is identical, and the fact that SMT obviously doesn't affect it at all in any Ryzen chips. And then when you start talking about true core performance, you're getting about 71 hash a second on XMR with Kryptonite. And if you add more than three cores, you start degrading performance on a per core basis. So we only got to about 140 hash a second max. Now, that being said, we did try to go ahead and mine some XMR with the GPU as well as some ETH and other things. And we had very little, if any luck at all. You can always rewatch the live streams to see exactly what happened for full transparency, which I'll link with the exclamation point up in the corner. Now moving on to Cinebench, we had a pretty typical score for Horizon 3. We had a score of all core at 565 points. And then moving on through the rest of the synthetic benchmarks, we had Firestrike Graphics at 3,010, Firestrike Physics at 6,560, and the combined score of 1,049. The Time Spy Graphics was at 893, while the Time Spy CPU was at 3,044. The Superposition pre canned benchmark at 1080p medium scored 1,800. And 88, while the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark scored 3,165. 
All of that's fine and dandy, but these aren't things we're going to be playing on a regular basis or even be able to repeat in games. However, we did go ahead and look at two more canned benchmarks and starting things off we have GTA 5 and this is going to be 1080p normal settings. Past zero had a min of 10, a max of 75 and an average of 58 while pass one had a min of 45 a max of 83 and an average of 69 pass two had a min of 36 with a max of 89 and a min of 63 pass three had a min of 33 with a max of 96 and an average of 62 and pass four had a min of three with a max of 115 and an average of 70. Now, unfortunately, the canned benchmarks for GTA 5 does not record any sort of 0.1% or 1% lows, and I don't really quite have the time to go ahead and get all of that together for you. We do have some 1% low benchmarks coming up here in a second, though. The next canned benchmark was Rise of the Tomb Raider, pretty typical here, and on Spine of the Mountain, it had a min of 27 with a max of 57 and an average of 41. Actually turning on DX12 for this particular benchmark decreased performance with a min of 14.8, a max of 50, and an average of 37. This story does continue with the Prophet's Tomb portion of the benchmark where in DX11 it had a min of 11, and a max of 31 and an average of 26 while if you enable dx12 you had a min of 5.9 with a max of 30.3 and an average of 23.7 things do change in the geothermal valley portion of this benchmark where the dx11 version had a min of 2 with a max of 37.2 and an average of 27.9 while if you did enable dx12 the numbers went up to a min of 9.4 with a max of 42.3 and an average of 27.1. It is notable that the average was still lower here and this was repeatable over a couple different tries so keep that in mind. I would probably go ahead and leave DX11 enabled for this particular title. Now Moving on to real world gaming where we either used fraps to record the frame times and FPS for of course your DX11 and lower games along with OpenGL and then for the games that were DX12 or Vulkan we went ahead and used PresentMon or the equivalent for the AMD version OCAT which we will link in the description below and you can also watch how I went through that process up in the corner. For Overwatch 1080p medium we had a min of 48 with a max of 67 and an average of 58. Now if we turn that down to low we got a min of 69 with a max of 94 and an average of 78.8. Now in this particular title unlike the 2400G where we were able to go ahead and play at 1080p medium above 60 all the time the 2200G is probably going to require you to bump down to low settings to maintain above 60 FPS at all times. Now of course there's some other tweaks and particular settings that you want to go through in that particular game and I can go ahead and link up here you know a settings guide at some point actually in the description I should say. Moving on to Doom its performance was nowhere near the 2400G and the 2400G keep in mind all the tests were run at 2666 megahertz. Now in this case in particular we did have 1% lows and the min for the 1% lows was 37.8 while the average for this title was 28.5 FPS. And this is all Doom 1080p low Vulcan. Moving on to Dark Souls 3, 1600 by 9 and low settings, we did maintain a pretty steady 30 FPS and above here with a min, and keep in mind this is not a 1% min, of 29, a max of 34, and an average of 32. Now one of the titles that was requested a lot was World of Tanks. I finally did get that loaded, and no, not the Blitz version, even though I did do that initially which you can check out in the live stream we did get the full version installed and tested at 1080p low and ultra at low we had a minimum of 86 with a max of 117 and an average of 103 while at ultra we did hit mins of 26 but the average stayed above 32 and the max was 40. Now that's going to pretty much cover all of the details that we did in our testing as 
I am doing it all live. If you guys hit the bell notification down below, you'll see when I'm going live. And I take suggestions from the chat on our benchmarking process and you guys get to pick the games. I feel this is a very good way to stay transparent and also gives you guys, you know, something else to watch with more detail. I hope you guys enjoy this format and don't forget to leave a like and a comment below. What do you guys think of the 2200G? Is it the savior for the GPU shortage problem or do we need to look at other options for entry level PC gaming? I'll see you next Tuesday.